starting with OCALC 5, we, as we discussed in a previous video, have the ability to do multi-arm or multi-leg structures, uh, H constructions. In the previous video, we just did a simple three-leg structure with a bridging arm. In this one, we're going to look at what's involved in doing more complex bracing um, using traditional bracing, tension-only components, cables, chains, that sorts of thing. Um, it's important to understand that in everyday use, the way this would be done would be to have pre-built structures in your catalog that you simply pull out and add loads to. And the reason is this is a fairly complex operation. But it's important to know how to do it from scratch, so let's take a look at what's involved. I'm going to open up this same structure with nothing on it. And the first thing we have to define is what are the attachment points that describe where on each leg, for example, for in the case of a cross brace, do the nodes of the node and beam structure go. So I'm going to go into my pole here, and I'm going to say that I want to add node juncture. Okay, and just to keep things straight, I like to give things names. So this is going to be called uh, cross brace upper. And it's at, let's say, the 35 foot mark. Okay, and now we'll make a copy of that onto the same leg and call it cross brace lower. And we'll make that at the at the 15 foot mark. Yeah, let's make it the let's make it the 20 foot mark, like that. So now I have a bolt there and a bolt there onto which I'm going to attach my uh, uh, node and beam structure. Now obviously I need some place to go, so I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put the same two structures on the other leg as well. We can do that fairly easily. And now we have to define the node and beam structure that we're going to make. And so to the overall pole, I add one section because I might want to have top braces as well. And I'm going to crawl, call this X brace. And this will contain all of the elements that will describe. Oop, I accidentally hooked it onto there. That wasn't what I meant to do. Sorry, I'm going to copy it up there. That's easily done. Um, sorry about that. And so now I have my cross brace folder, and we need to start putting things in that. So let's do the nodes first because they'll be the easiest. All right, I'm going to go and say add a node. I'm going to call it node cross brace one and then the system will the system will automatically continue that numbering scheme for me if I make all make four of them so there'd be a simple cross brace with no connection in the middle for this example and so on this one I say this goes to an x1 this goes to and you see it popped up as soon as I did that and x2 this goes to an x3, and finally this one goes to an x4. Now I need to describe the material that I'm going to use to actually make the braces between these nodes. So the nodes are just notional. They describe an endpoint of a beam, which by definition is going to go to the bolts that we described previously, which have attachments to the pole, and I can change them to the other side and rotate them and everything that I would normally do. So I happen to have my AISC steel catalog loaded up, and I'm going to take a two by two piece of um, angle iron, and I'm going to make my cross braces out of that. Once I actually have a material defined inside the cross brace um, group, what I can then do is say drag from here to here, and the system will say, oh, I understand you dragged from between two nodes. What you want to do is um, create a beam, and I'm going to say I want to use that material, and then I'll say I want to use that same material here, and just as simply as that, I've gone ahead and created a cross brace structure. Now obviously I can do a lot of things in here. For example, I can go into this beam, and I can say that this beam's mode is in fact uh, tension only, which means it represents a cable or a chain as opposed to a stiff beam. Um, 
for certain types of connections, I can set it to compression only so that it's able to take loads and compression but is not able to provide any support and tension. Or in my case, I've got it set to standard, which means it takes tension and compression simultaneously. So that's all that's involved in putting together um, uh, node and beam structures. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, let's say for the sake of argument that what I wanted to do was actually have these two um, structures um, uh, connected in the center as well. What I could have done, I'll go ahead and take this beam back out. If I have any beam structure, I can say that what I want to do is split the beam. Now it has split it, put a node in the middle, and now I could have gone here to here with that material, and then here to here with that same material. And now I've described a cross brace where there is in fact an interconnection between the two um, braces. And I can do lots of other things. Um, let me, let me undo that and go back to where we were before. And the, let's take an example here where if I take the the upper the upper um, connection on one pole and actually say that its rotation is 180 degrees, you'll see what happened is the connection flipped to the other side of the pole. I take the lower connection on the other pole. I also switch it so that it's got 180 degrees. And again, we've switched to the other side of the pole. And now if I zoom in, you can actually see that there is a, um, an actual gap between those braces. They are, they, uh, one is bonded to one side of the pole and one is bonded to the other. So now, for example, let's say I want to do that same cross brace trick I did before, right? I can uh, split this beam. I can split this beam, and now I can actually define some, a beam uh, that hooks those two together. Now one of the things that's important to know is that I can change how large or small these um, beams are visualized to make it, you know, we can't actually see that beam in there, but let me go in here and say that in my X-brace structure, under my rendering parameters, I want to override traditional rendering. I want to say the nodes are rendered as something like like six inches in diameter and the beams are rendered as something like three inches in diameter and now the stuff looks a little bit smaller so the rendering the color and the and so forth is actually under my control I have just have just have to understand what materials I've used to describe them um, but uh, if I need to declutter it I can change the rendering using the rendering parameters on each individual section or on each individual node if I need to so that's an introduction to uh, node and beam construction. It's a reasonably complex topic. So again, typically you just pre-make these assemblies and plop them onto your structures. But it's important to understand the concept if you want to model something complex like a cross brace as we have here.